Good morning and welcome to Villarica First United Methodist Church at the Garden. We have three core values, worship, education, and missions. We want to thank you for your ongoing faithfulness to ministries and your ongoing generosity and remind you you can t- continue to give by following the online link or by stopping by the church office and dropping a check. Be praying for our community. Several of our members have been impacted by COVID-19 and some are fighting the virus. Now's the time to pray hard. Masks are now part of our new normal. If you'd like to have a Villarica First United Methodist mask, please email or call the church office and you can order one today. Bible study resumes on August 5th. We are studying the book of 1 Samuel. Youth and children will be gathering some as some now. Please reach out to Jason Backus, Shannon Shaddix, and Chelsea Shedd if you need updates or are not getting them for these ministries. Now, let's, let's pass, pass the, the peace. peace. As Christians, we reflect on the Apostles' Creed to affirm what we believe about God, about Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Please join me. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Hey friends, it's Miss Shannon here. Hope everyone is enjoying this summer. Um, seems like we've had summer for so long now. I guess this is the summer that's never going to end. However, it is going to, and we are all getting ready to go back to school. We, of course, we have no idea what that's going to look like. Some of you are going to be at home. Some of you are going to be in a traditional classroom. Some of you may already homeschool. So this is just the regular um, thing for you guys when it's time to get back in the groove of things. I have been searching the internet and found this really cute. Um, I think it'll really help me too. It is a back to school prayer journal and it just kind of walks through and it talks about what is prayer and who you're going to pray for, um, praying for peace. And it gives you different scriptures. It has some cool emojis that it will be fun to color. Maybe that particular day you're mad, scared, crazy, excited, nervous. However, you can just choose to <clears throat> mark those days or however you're. I just thought it was really cute though and I wanted to share it with you. you can, there's places for draw for some of you younger kids um, that only like to draw and then some of you that really like to write in detail. There's plenty of um, space for you guys to draw and to write and it's just it's just really a neat little thing I thought to kind of kick you off um, for the school year. And it has some um, bookmarks. I think you can print them yourself um, and color them yourself. So if your parents, if you'll talk to your parents, if this is something that you're interested in, if you will shoot me an email, text, phone call, or whatever, I'll be glad to get any of you a copy of this um, cool back to school prayer journal. <clears throat> that way you kind of kick off for the right school year. You're all ready. Your spiritual heart's ready. <clears throat> I just want each one of you to know that Miss Chelsea and I, continue to pray for you guys we miss you we are praying that your school year is everything that you want it to be um even though we have no idea what that's going to look like but we are ready 
we have an awesome, awesome God that is going to be with each and every one of us every step of the way. And guys, that's the most important thing is that you just don't forget that Jesus is here with us. I know some days are hard, some days are long, you're frustrated, but just know that God is with us always. So I found this neat little, um, it's a prayer for back to school um, students. And I really thought it was really cute. It kind of summed it up. So I want to say a little prayer with you guys and for you guys. Um, so let's bow our heads. It says, <clears throat> for students, a prayer for students. Dear Lord, thank you for each and every one of the child's gifts as they transition into a new school year. Fill each student with enthusiasm and a heart that is excited to learn and grow. Cover them with your enduring love. Give them the confidence and the grace and equip them with the ability to persevere through trials. Lord, I also ask that you bless their teachers with all these wonderful gifts as well, as well as wisdom, understanding, and a heart to serve as everyone joins together and embarks on this new journey. I just ask that you lead God, direct us, and keep us safe. In your name I pray. Amen. All right, guys. Hey, post your Bible school um, pictures. Don't forget those. And why don't you start sharing your cool back to school outfits? Post them on the Facebook page. We'd love to see what some of you are going to wear on the first day of school. Love and miss you guys. Bye.
no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. shadow you won't light up, no mountain you won't climb up, coming after me, no, no, no. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. This morning comes from Psalm 119, verses 129 through 136. Now, I like this text. And, and why am I preaching from the Psalms? Well, one of my best friends is a pastor, and, and he's been preaching through the Psalms lately. And as I looked at what the Psalms were, uh, were for this coming Sunday, uh, I got inspired. I've been inspired by his preaching, by the way he's connected, and I connected big time last week as I was listening to him. Isn't that neat how we get to listen to one another and, and check out what's going on in different churches? I find that to be quite a blessing, and I hope you're taking the opportunity to listen to a lot of the different voices that are out there and how God is moving and stirring inside of our churches and communities. God is on the move. But from Psalm 119, a lot of good passages from Psalm 119, but this one stuck out for me this week. Let me tell you why. Ready? Here's the reading. Your statutes are wonderful. Therefore, I obey them. The unfolding of your words give light. It gives understanding to the simple. I open my mouth and pant, longing for your commands. Turn to me and have mercy on me, as you always do to those who love your name. Direct my footsteps according to your word. Let no sin rule over me. Redeem me from human oppression that I may obey your precepts. Make your face shine on your servant and teach me your decrees. Streams of tears flow from my eyes, for your law is not obeyed. That word, that good word from the scriptures, is that not the most awesome prayer? Is that not the most awesome affirmation? I, I, I want to pray like that, right? You may be saying that as you read scriptures like this, or maybe when you heard it just now. Uh, I want to pray like that. I want to sound like that. Deeper, better, I want a faith like that, right? I mean, when we read these words, they are inspiring. For some of us, though, we may read words like this and we go, whoa, that's, that's, that's a little lofty. That's a little bit beyond me. And we can kind of go straight to a, a bit of a conclusion of that's not my faith and I'm not living that way and that's not my testimony or why, why can I not say those things? And, and if we do that too much, we kind of feel like failures. We feel like um, that we're not living up to that and we kind of feel bad. And that's not the writer's intention. That's not the psalmist's 
hope. Uh, and most certainly that is not what God wants when we hear those things. That is most certainly what the devil wants. He wants for you to read these words and feel like you're not measuring up and you don't measure up and here it comes. He wants you to think you can't measure up. Now that's what Satan wants. Those are the fiery darts that come at us from the evil one who try to pull us down, tear us down, make us feel bad about our faith, make us feel bad about the path that we're on. I'm not growing. I'm not getting there. I can't pray that. But words like this are inspiring, and the hope and call of God is that words that inspire would create an aspiration for us, that we would then take them and aspire to be these things, to have this kind of attitude, to have this sort of understanding, to be close to God, to know His Word. These are the things that God wants for us. And hear me when I say this. God wants to build a thirst into you, even if you find yourself right now not thirsty for the things of God. These words are inspiring to us, but the purpose of these words is to aspire for us to then say, I want that. I want to live into that. Now, why is that important this morning? It's important because Scripture is meant to be heard and received and then understood and lived out. That's the whole point, is for these things to become firm in our life and then to become stepping stones for us to move out into the world. For us to take the practice of our faith and move it into the execution of our faith. Because let's be honest, the game of faith, if you want to think about it, I know we're all missing sports right now, and trust me, I know that you see the tackling dummy next to me. We'll get there. But but, but Christianity, but faith, but believing in God, uh, when it comes to being a game... A game can't really be played, and it can't be played well, and it most certainly can't be won if you're not practicing. And if you're practicing, but then you're never playing, well, what are you getting ready for? Christian faith is both, right? It's, it's the whole game. It's all of the work and all of the practice, and then the execution of that practice in that game. And so think about it as life. Life is daily living. Life is the grind. Life is the mundane. And the hope is that each and every one of us will see God in the everyday, that we will experience Him, that we will go through our faith, being faithful, chasing faithfulness, exercising faithfulness as we get better and better. And then when the storms of life come, we're ready. That's kind of like the big game, right? That's kind of like Friday night. Everyday life is sort of Monday through Thursday, but Friday night under the lights, we're thinking football season, right? If you're a big high school football fan like I am, like Friday night football is a big deal. The smell of the grass, the look of the lights as the, the time starts to change. I mean, some of you are tingling right now because you're thinking about it. Even if you're not a football fan, I hope you realize that all of the practice and all of the preparation is meant. It is meant for us to then play it on the field, execute it, and that's the same thing that happens with us in our Christian faith. What do I mean by that? Well, let me put it this way. I got my tackling dummy friend here for a very important reason. I remember playing ball when I was growing up. I played second string center. I wasn't quite tall enough in order to be the starting center for the Gainesville High School Red Elephants. But for the years that I played ball, um, it was awesome playing for Gainesville High School. And uh, football was a big deal. Football and baseball, but football was a big deal for us. And in order to play, in order to get ready for Friday night, you had to practice. You had to know what you were doing. And when it comes to football, if you're going to play, if you're going to get on the field, you're going to get what? You're going to get hit. And if you're going to get hit on Friday night, you got to be ready for it. you got to be prepared for it. And the only way to do that is to spend Monday through Thursday, what? Getting pounded by the tackling dummy. And I remember the coaches as they would take those, those straps on the back, right? And they would grab the dummies right here. And as we ran by, what would they do? They'd take those tackling dummies and slam them right into us as hard as they possibly could. And most of the time, they hit us harder than we ever got hit on Friday night. And if you've ever been a lineman or a running back, trust me, you know the truth of that statement. The way the coaches would lean into those bags and just absolutely knock you down. That happens for us in our Christian walk. It's what it's like when we're playing the game. This is, this is what it's like when we're living out our faith. Monday through Thursday is practice. And then on Friday nights, under the lights, we take everything that we have practiced and we put it into action. We execute. We execute the plays that we have learned. We 
execute um, all of the basics that are fundamental to us being able to do this and do it right and do it well and hopefully win the game. So how do I make it real even more so? Well, I, I just got done with uh, the funeral for Nancy Nichols. And those of us at Villa Rica First Methodist, uh, a lot of us knew Nancy. Uh, and we're going to miss her. We're going to miss her a whole lot. But it's kind of like what we said in the service, if you were able to watch that. Nancy was always on. She was always playing. When it came to her faith, I don't think she ever took her cleats off. I mean, she was ready to go. She was ready to play, and she did. And so whether it was dropping by her house and saying, hey, or you going through a real hard time and she, she being there for you, writing you a card and making it so personal, making it so awesome, Nancy knew what that was like. And we knew that it was real because of the way Nancy lived her faith even personally. She was reading her Bible. She was attending Bible study and coming to the Zoom study. She was so faithful. Even after treatments, she would be so worn out and she would attempt to, to sign in the video side, but sometimes it was just too much. And there she is laying on the couch and she's, she has uh, tuned in and called in on the audio and it's incredible to see that kind of faithfulness. You see, what was happening was she was practicing her faith every second. And then when the cancer was really bad, I mean, cancer's bad no matter what, but it was really bad. Well, that's like Friday night. That's like being under the lights. That means that the game is on and it's, and it's on the line and she's playing. Everything that she's done Monday through Friday was preparing her for Friday night. For those of us who are walking daily, everything you do Monday through Saturday, everything you do on Friday night and Saturday night, everything you do Monday through Saturday is preparation for the big game. It's preparation for Sunday. The day that we lift up Jesus Christ for being the Son of God, the second member of the Holy Trinity, for being our Savior, for giving us grace when we do not deserve it, for getting up underneath our burdens and helping us, we praise Him, we lift up His name, we give Him thanks, and we do it every single day and especially on Sunday, just like those football players who practice Monday through Thursday, but then on Friday, it's game time. I wonder... If you saw your spiritual life a little bit more like athletics, Paul did that quite often. If you saw your spiritual life a little bit more like athletics, maybe it would help you. Maybe it would help you with your motivation, your understanding, your connection, your connection to your faith and to the God who loves you. Think about that and what that looks like. Because Monday through the whole rest of the week, you ought to be playing like that dummy's coming right at you, right? Like that bag is just going to get slammed into you. Because when times get hard and times get tough, you got to be able to take those shots and take those hits. And our Christian faith, our belief in Jesus Christ, the power of the Holy Spirit, it allows us to take those shots and carry the ball and score the points and win the game and be a team and love every minute of it. That's what we want for you. That's what your church wants for you, people of God. For you to get in there and play that game. For you to be able, just as the scriptures say, for you to be able to have the kind of faith that you heard just a second ago. The kind of faith that says things like, your statutes are wonderful, therefore I obey them. The unfolding of your words give light. It gives understanding to the simple. I open my mouth and pant, longing for your commands. Turn to me and have mercy on me, as you always do to those who love your name. Direct my footsteps according to your word. Let no sin rule over me. Redeem me from human oppression that I may obey your precepts. Make your face to shine on your servant and teach me your decrees. Streams of tears flow from my eyes, for your law is not obeyed. Listen to the connection that comes from the psalmist. If those words seem too hard for you, maybe it takes some practice. That's what we want to do as your church family, is to offer you the opportunity to come and play the game. Playing the game means practice and execution. It means come in and be part of Bible study. Be a part of worship. Take it seriously. Have holy habits. Teach it to your children. 
Fail in front of your children. Don't be afraid to not get it right. They need to know that you're going to trip. They need to know that you're going to, let's just use the image, that you're going to fumble the ball sometimes. But you get back up and you play the game and you steal that ball back and you score those points and you let your children know what perseverance looks like. You let the world know what it means for the Christian to persevere, to endure, to take the shots that come, not just in the game, but in practice every single day. Will you practice? Will you practice? Will you move from an inspiration of the word to an aspiring to living out that word, beginning with practice and then execution when the trials and storms of life come? I think the challenge is before you. I think the opportunity for you to live out this text is, is really and truly there. And I, so I'm not going to say much more about the text itself. That's your homework. Take that scripture from Psalm 119, 129 through 136, whatever translation you're reading. Take your Bible, open it up. After saying those prayers about practice and execution, about playing the full game, ask the Lord and pray to Him, Lord, may I live up to that scripture. May I live out that scripture. May I take you seriously. May I take your word seriously. Holy Spirit, make that a part of your prayer. Holy Spirit, lead me and guide me to be who I need to be. Make me a good team player. Help me to practice. Help me to get up when I'm tackled and knocked down. And Lord, give me the ball and help me to run and help me to live and help me to be faithful. Mm. I, for, for me, that's a big amen. That's what we want for you. Will you pray with me as we end this worship service? Let's pray. Almighty God, we ask that you would be with us in the practice and in the execution, that you would be with us in the game. May we read your word and know that it calls us to more. May we never feel like failures, but may we always understand that we are fully dependent upon your grace and the presence of the Holy Spirit who has committed to get up underneath our burdens and help us live out these things. God, may we become people who have holy words on our lips, holy actions coming from our hands, and a holy love for you, God, who wholly love us. And we pray these things in the name of the one who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. It's awesome to be able to come to you today. God is good. Amen? And God bless.